OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Um, hi, everyone. Nice to see you all. And I'm now going to share up my screen because we have a lot to do today and there's a lot of information. And so rather than go over the information all myself, I invited a special little guest host. I'm going to share my screen and introduce the guest host for today's, today's um, interactive Google Slides. Can you all see a Word document? Yes. Oh, hey, Diana. Good to see you. Diana, you can be our secondary techie person. Can you help monitor the chat room and? Sure. Oh, awesome. OK. OK. Um, all right. So uh, first of all, I'm going to let my co-host introduce himself. Please introduce yourself. I am ZoomBot. It is nice to meet you. Can you all hear him? Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice to meet you too, Zumbot. What can you tell us about the presenter? Me. The human Stephanie Thomas works for the San Diego Community College District. Continuing Ed. Well, how many years of experience does this human have? This human has taught ESL for over 30 years. Okay, well, how long has she been teaching online? This human has been teaching online since 2017. She started teaching online prior to COVID. Oh, okay, well, has she ever won any state awards? Ha ha. <laughs> Funny you should ask. In 2019, she won the Ron Lee Tech Award. Okay, well, I'm bringing that up, not because I want to boast, but because I'm actually the Ron Lee Technology Award Coordinator this year. So I would like to take a moment to encourage any CATISOL member, ESL teacher, to apply for this technology award. It's a generous award. You earn $1,000. A lot more information will be coming out in March. If you don't see any information, your agency for some reason isn't receiving it, I have my contact information here, Thomas at sdccd.edu. You can reach out to me and I would be happy to share more information. We'll be sharing a flyer. And you may think that you have to be a techno whiz kid, but you don't. All you have to have done is completed some sort of project using technology with your students. And since you're all online instructors now, I'm sure you all had experience with that. So don't let the, the name of the award intimidate you from trying it out. If you're a good writer, you know how to write to rubrics and you've completed a project with your students, I encourage you to apply. Okay, well, thanks for the intel, Zumbat. Is there anything else we should ask participants to share? We should ask the human participants to write their agency, subject, LMS, Google account yes slash no, device using in this Zoom session, in the chat box. So at this time, if you would please take a moment and identify your agency, the subject you teach, your learning management system. Are you using Canvas? Are you using Google Classroom? Um, do you have a Google account? And if so, please go ahead and log into it. Also, please identify the device you're using during the Zoom session because there will be breakout rooms. And if you're on a phone, I'll need to know that. And so I'm going to stop share for just a moment so I can take a look at the chat box and see what's in there. So not just your agency, but the subject you teach, what device you are on, yes, no Google account. Okay, good. I'm getting some intel here.
Oh, good. Most of you, it looks like most of you are on a PC, a laptop. Somebody's on a Mac. I will tell you, I don't know much about Macs, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. Okay, great. So it looks like most of you are on PCs or a Mac. I don't see any phones. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, what else should we share at this time, Zoombot? We should share the objectives for this session. Identify ways to use interactive Google Slides in an asynchronous environment. So in other words, I'm going to demo how you could use these interactive Google Slides with your students when you're not on Zoom with them, when you're not working with them face to face. Identify ways to use Google Slides in a synchronous environment. So in other words, I'm going to also demo how you could use these Google Slides during a Zoom session when you're actually face to face with your students. Create a fact share slideshow or create an info share slideshow. So I'm going to show you two different templates to approach this interactive Google Slides. We're going to do a fact share, which I use to either review or introduce new information, and then an info share type of template, which I use when I have a lot of info that I want my students to selectively look at, like a syllabus. So Zumba, do the participants need to take notes on the information during this session? No. The humans do not need to take notes. All of the resources and information in this session are gathered on a Padlet created by the human, Stephanie Thomas. So everything that I'm going through, can you now see a yellow Padlet screen? Great. Everything that I'm going to share with you during the session is located on this Padlet, and we will link it in the chat toward the end of the session. If I link it now, I'm afraid people will spend too much time playing with it, and um, it, my goal is to have you actually create an interactive slideshow. So you will have access to all of the interactive slideshows I share with you, this Word document. You will also have templates, a fact share template and an info share template, and some how-to videos. In addition, I've gathered some resources such as how you can find jazzy looking slide templates. My favorite go to is Slides Carnival, where there are thousands of different templates and I love perusing through them. I guess I'm a little bit of a like a slide nerd. I love perusing through these templates because I get so inspired. So, for example, if you look up um, playful, just look at all these beautiful templates and there are hundreds of pages and thousands of templates. So that is also on the Padlet along with, whoops, I lost my Padlet. Okay, that is also on the Padlet along with another site called Slides Go. I haven't used that much. And places where you can get royalty free clip art so that you don't, you don't have any copyright infractions. Uh, my go-to is Pixabay, I love it. There's video content up there and there is also uh, lots of different pictures, but Unsplash is another source as if as is Creative Commons. And then finally, some miscellaneous info. For example, if you ever want to use this uh, text to speech feature with your students in Word or on a Mac, I've got some how to videos. So let's return back to our presentation. Well, thanks so much for helping us to get this session started, Zoombot. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we begin? Yes. I recently underwent an AI upgrade. May I showcase my fascinating sense of humor? It's new. Okay, shoot. How do robots eat guacamole? With microchips. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Okay, uh, I know that it was lame. I get it. I get it. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to work through 
an interactive slideshow as if we were doing this in an asynchronous environment. In other words, as if you had assigned it to your students and you weren't there to help him or her through. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to show you the slideshow. You should now be able to see Tish Wonders bootable. Can you see that? Yes. Perfect. OK, now I brought this up because when students work their way through an interactive slideshow, it's very important that you have clear buttons as to where they need to click next, because Google also offers this little black menu bar. And if your students use that little black menu bar to move through the slideshow, it's possible that it will not be sequenced correctly because the interactivity comes through links and layers. So you're going to need to instruct your students to use the buttons to move through the slideshow, just as I'm instructing you now to make sure that you move through the slideshow using the buttons and not the little black Google menu that appears. Stephanie, can I ask a interrupt you just sure. briefly? Everything you're showing is very foreign to me. And so, and you're talking extremely fast and I'm trying to comprehend and figure out where you are Mm -hmm. in all of this um where what site are you at at this point Is, are you using google or i see Word. well at this point i've got a couple of different things going on but you don't need to worry because later in the presentation i have templates for you to click on and you will actually click on those templates and create your slideshow so at this time, you do not need to be opening anything up. You do not need to be doing anything except for watching, listening, and viewing. This is a demonstration segment. When I'm ready for you to work with the Google templates, I will, I will share those templates with you in the chat box. And then you'll go ahead and create your very own um, slideshow. So at this time, I just wanted to introduce the objectives for today's, um, for today's session, which are ways to use Google Slides in synchronous and asynchronous environment. You're going to actually create your own interactive uh, power, uh, Google Slides, and you don't need experience. OK, so does that make yeah. you feel more comfortable? Yes, thank great. you. Great, great. And feel free to interrupt like that. That's not a problem, OK? OK. All right, so at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link in the chat box that link is going to take you automatically you don't have to open anything just click on the link and you will go to that slideshow that i just showed you the tish wonders bootable please work through that slideshow on your own individually and then make sure you you take note of the message on the last slide of the slideshow you're going to when you're finished with the entire slideshow you're going to post the message on that last slide in the chat box. And that's how I will know you are done. So can someone tell me what is it that you need to post in chat after you complete the slideshow? The message, the last line. Perfect. All right, so now at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to stop share. And I am going to post the link to the interactive slideshow in the chat. So what you'll do is click on the link, Complete the interactive slideshow and it will walk you through what to do. Complete the interactive slideshow and then come on back and write the last message for the slideshow. And I see somebody in the chat box says, sorry, I don't know Padlet. It's just an interactive bulletin board. So once I share the link with you, all you have to do is click on the features of Padlet and stuff pop opens for you. Okay, so I've posted the link in the chat. Go ahead and click on that link, work your way through the slideshow, and then come on back and tell me the message on the last slide. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I want you to I want you to think for a moment. I just had you work through a slideshow that my students work through. I'm an advanced grammar instructor, an online advanced grammar instructor. And when my students work through a slideshow like this, why do you suppose I asked them to write the message on the last slide in the assignment? You did it in the chat box, but I tell my students to do it in the assignment. Why, why would I do that? To verify that the students actually gone through the slideshow. 
Bingo, exactly, exactly. You want some way to know that your students completed the entire slideshow and they didn't skip out after slide two. So if they've gone through the whole slideshow, whether they did it properly with the buttons or they simply clicked through the slideshow, you know they saw every slide. Um, and somebody said, so you'll know that they're done. Remember that this is how I would use it in an asynchronous environment. So I wouldn't know they're done, which is why I tie it to an assignment in Canvas. Um, I don't know, uh, other people have different learning management systems. I set up an assignment and when the student submits the assignment, I check and see whether they've got the correct message in the assignment. And then I give them the points for working through the slideshow. Stephanie, I have a quick question. Sure. So does that mean that you are making sure that they answer every single grammar point as well? They can't just go to the last slide? Oh, I'm glad you bring that up because this particular strategy doesn't work for that. But the next strategy I will show you does. Okay. So that's a very good question. So no, in this particular format where I just want the message, I'm, I mean, I'm assuming they at least saw the slides they need to see. Perhaps they didn't click where they needed to and they didn't get the feedback, but I'm, I'm assuming that at least they went through the slideshow. If I want to make sure that they got the feedback, this is going to be the second demo. Because because that's a good point. Like if you have students and you want to make sure that not only did they not only did they answer all of the questions, but there's a sound foundation. They understand the information. Now we're going to move into demo two. And this is how I frequently use it in a synchronous environment on Zoom. So for demo two, I am going to put another interactive Google slideshow link in the chat box. But this time, this would be a synchronous environment the way we're doing it right now on Zoom. I'm going to create breakout rooms and you are going to work with a partner to work through this slideshow. And this slideshow is about fonts. Um, it's like font trivia, things like um, Arial, Comic Sans. So you don't get an advantage this time if you're an English teacher. I'm hoping everybody, you know, everybody's it's a level playing field, unless you're a real nerd about fonts. So what I'm going to do is partner you. I'm just going to um, randomly partner you, create breakout rooms. And what you're going to do is work through the entire slideshow. Now, the very last slide of the slideshow links to an online quizzes site. Many of you are familiar with Kahoot. I, I happen to use quizzes. So the very last slide in this slideshow links to quizzes. All you'll do is enter a team name. You don't have to use your real names because I am gonna bring up the results so that you can see how it looks. So just enter a goofy team name, complete both the slideshow and the quizzes with your, with your partner, and then you get two virtual high fives. The team who gets back to the main room quickest. After completing the quizzes, you will return to the main room by clicking leave breakout room. Is there anyone who does not know how to do that? Stephanie Ruth has a question. Okay. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Okay, I'm wondering on that slideshow when it says, uh, when you answer a question, if you, if you are not sure how to answer the question and you wanna go back and look at the explanation, is there a way to go back on those slideshows? I only saw next, I didn't see back. You know what I'm ah, saying? Ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you could link that. You really could. There's a way that you could link that. Um, or you could you could have, if you, you remember how you saw the no slide? I mean, hopefully you got a couple of them wrong. No, I just went through and answered them all correctly. But oh, I'm thinking it, in terms of the students, if they got it wrong, is there any feedback? If they get it wrong, they're sent back to the slide with the information. Perfect. Okay, that's yeah, what I if would you, like to know. Yeah. So if they get it wrong, they're sent they're sent back. Okay, great. Okay, so any questions on 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 the next activity, the next demo? I'm going to link an interactive slideshow and then you're going to complete the slideshow with your partner. You will complete the quizzes, use a fake name if you want to, and then race on back to this main room by clicking leave breakout room. Yeah. Yes, so uh, the rest of you who are coming back in, what, what did you think? Oh, good. I'm glad that you liked it. That was a lot of fun. That was really great. Yeah, okay. it was great. It was good to interact. It was, it's fun to use in a, in a synchronous Zoom session because the students who get 
back to the main room first. It's just kind of a dramatic entry and, and they get really excited about it. And then some of them kind of, I teach advanced grammar and they, they sometimes kind of, you know, playfully rag on the people who kind of come in later and everybody just, it's, it's kind of fun. Stephanie, can I ask you, because I've never used uh, quizzes before, is it free or is it a paid component? It's free. I, I only use the free version. I mean, there's an upgrade and there are certain benefits to having the upgrade. So what I did was assign homework. What you took was not a live quiz. It was a homework assignment per se. So um, with the paid version, you can assign it until eternity. But with the free version, you just have to go keep going back in and revise, push the date further along. So like um, you get to assign it for about 15 days out in front. So you just have to remember to go back in if you wanna keep it open to modify the date that the quiz closes. And once everybody returns, and I think I'll close the breakout rooms pretty quickly because I wanna let you all actually work with the slides and create your own. Um, you'll see from the back end how quizzes works. But this is just one way that you could do a quick formative assessment to see whether or not your students are understanding the content in a kind of a casual, playful way. Can I ask you something real quick? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what I have trouble with when I'm trying to pull in some kind of uh, cool little techie thing for my students to use is, uh, you know, if I don't do things in the correct order, it doesn't work. So if there's a way that you could say, first have them access the link in the chat, then create the breakout rooms, then do this, then do that. And then, you know, so that everything happens in the correct order and it works for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I think I do. Can I ask I what you try, teach? I teach ESL uh, at an adult school. And what level? So, it's it's uh, intermediate advanced. Okay, okay. I think they should be able to do this, but I absolutely understand what you're saying. If you're dealing with beginning uh, ESL students, getting that link up there and understand having your students understanding the share screen will be a little difficult. So I would recommend in that case that you do the actual slideshow as a whole group. You know, like you ask okay. the students to give you feedback on what button to click, you, you click the buttons and you ask the students, what should I click? And they would uh, say Arial or whatever. And then when you're ready to open up the quiz, have it be a live quiz and you would just paste the link in chat and ask the students to click on the link. Yeah, I understand. But, but uh, then you used breakout rooms and you're saying do a live quiz but in a breakout room. No, I would just keep everybody in a whole group. If I taught levels one, two, three, or four ESL, I wouldn't do the breakout room because I don't know if the students can share their screens in the breakout rooms. I don't know if they know how to do that. Unless I'm confident that they all know how to share their screen. And then here's another point. When you have students calling into your Zoom session, most likely you have students who are on their phones. So you have to make sure if you're going to use breakout rooms and you need a screen share, that you pair somebody on a phone with somebody who's on a PC or a Mac because the person on, on the phone cannot share screen. I see, okay. So right. I think it's harder at the lower levels. If I were doing this at the lower level, I would keep everybody in the whole group and simply ask for input. And then when I'm ready for the quizzes, they would take it individually. I would put the live link in the um, chat box and then they'd go up on quizzes, they'd complete the quizzes and then I'll bring up the results. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close ahead. the breakout room so that we can move forward. I just wanted to give people a chance to see how this looked. I think almost everybody is done. Yeah. It might be frustrating for them. <laughs> They're gonna be yanked off their game, but. Bless you. Thank you. I should mute. <laughs> yes, please.
Okay, it looks like everybody is back now. Um, so what did you think? Was it, was it kind of a fun experience? Please somebody say yes. Yeah, fun, super fun. Oh my let's, gosh, it was amazing. Let's go ahead and check your results. Let's see how you all did on quizzes, okay? Okay. All right. So here are my quizzes results. Can you see the quizzes? Uh, let me refresh it. Can you see the quizzes scoreboard? Yes. Yes. So who is Blue Bunny? Wow. Blue Bunny, huge shout out. You got 100%. Yay for us. And do you see how, um, so for example, Christina and Beth and Batman and Robin both had higher points than Dream Team, but Dream Team actually looks like it's in second place because timing matters on this particular type of game too. So um, here you can see everybody's score. So if it was my students, anybody who scored under an 80%, I would recommend that they go back in at their leisure and retake the quiz because I'm, I'm aiming for uh, mastery here. But that's what it looks like as the teacher. And so it's kind of fun to play in a Zoom session because it's kind of dramatic when the first two who finish the entire assignment get back into the main room and they look around and they're the only ones there. It's just kind of fun to use with your students in a synchronous environment. This is also how you could use this in an asynchronous environment, which I frequently do. So the students will work through the slideshow. And the, the question that we had prior to this activity was, how do you know if the students answered all of the questions? Well, you could attach it to an online quiz, something like quizzes, and somebody else had a question in the chat. Would you use Kahoot? Absolutely, you could use Kahoot. If you're more familiar with it, go, go with the one that you're more comfortable with. Um, quizzes have the feature where you could assign homework before Kahoot. And since I was teaching online before Kahoot got it, I went in the direction of quizzes, but either one. Okay, so do you all need a few minutes break or shall we just get right to the templates and get creative? I'm okay to continue, but I don't wanna speak for everybody. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good okay. to keep going. Okay, all right. Good. I am going to share my screen once again, and I'm going to show you there are two types of templates that we can um, work with today. You'll choose just one. What you work through with the um, bootable and the font facts is sort of a fact sharing. Now I'm going to show you an information sharing type of um, template, and I use it for my syllabus. So. I teach an eight week, 18 week course. And during the first nine weeks as an ESL instructor, I take my students on a road trip down Route 66 and they take me on a road trip through their native country. So this is our interactive syllabus. And you can see uh, module three here is, is Kansas. Students click there and they can see what they'll be doing in module three. And they can click here, for example, module five is Texas. They click there and they can see what they're doing in module five. So this isn't sequenced the same way. It's a little bit different, and I call it an information sharing template. Here's one more example. The second nine weeks of class, my classroom is sort of an escape room where I leave clues throughout the module, and the students have to guess what the monsters in each room of the haunted San Diego Whaley house, what they want in order to get out of the escape room. So for example, here's module nine and there's a rat in the general store. So they work through all of this and throughout little clues are planted and the rat's looking for a nut. And here's module 10 and it's a zombie. He's looking for brains. So notice the reading is the benefits of the bilingual brain. So I try to kind of clue everything together in that kind of a way. But this is an example of an information sharing type template, which is more like an online bulletin board. So for today, what I'm going to do is offer up a choice. You can either use the factual template that looks just like um, the, the font facts template that you worked through, or there's another template that you could use here and it's called the bulletin board template and it looks like this. You'll notice how it comes up with make a copy. Um, what it's gonna do is make a copy in your own Google Drive. 
So you'll have this after the session right inside your own Google Drive. So you can see here, this is like a bulletin board and it's an information share. So you could say something like, um, this could be about your class. So the title could be, you just click on the text and you could just change the text to about class. Idea one might be textbook. Idea two might be um, assignment expectations. Idea three might be about the teacher. Idea four might be about the exams or the tests. And idea five could be whatever you choose. So with this template, what's gonna happen is idea one will link to slide two. Idea two will link to slide three. This will be your idea two. Idea three will link to slide four. And each one of these slides, two, three, four, five, and six, will link back to slide one. So those are the two templates that you can use. And so what I'd like you to do right now is only concern yourself. We're going to take about, say, 10 or 15 minutes, and you can just concern yourself with changing up the content inside the slideshow. So just click on the text boxes, change this up to something you might use with your students, and that's all you have to worry about. In about 15 minutes, we will regroup and I will show you how to link those slides and images to get that interactive effect. Does that sound good? Okay, so I'm gonna link both I'm going to link both of the fact sharing and the bulletin board style template in the chat box. You select the one you want. You don't need to select them both. They are on the Padlet, which I will share with you. So but I think it's time to start inserting some links so that you can go through and complete this on your own. So what I'm going to do is share my screen and I'm going to start showing, I'm going to show how to link this up with the fact share. All right, so you should be able to see that fact share uh, slideshow. Can everyone see that now? Okay, good. Now we need to create our first link on the first slide where it says next. To create that link, what we are going to do is we are going to create a shape and we're gonna overlay the shape on the button next. To do this, we'll click insert, shape, We'll reach for this triangle. You could actually reach for this one, which is exactly the same shape as the shape or as the button. So then you'll cover your button with that shape. Now you can see that that button is covered, right? So now let's insert the link. We've got that shape over the next button. So now I'm going to click insert, link, slides in this presentation, next slide apply. And you can see that the link is there. If this little thing pops up, you see that the link is there. Could so now what help? you need to do. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah, I'll do it several sure. more times. I will do it several more times. I understand the, the one time is not going to do it. I get it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is look, we don't want that ugly gray box in front of our next button do because the students can't see the next. So now we're going to turn it invisible. And we'll do that by going up to, there's the fill color. It looks like a little paint box. So we're gonna click there and we're gonna click transparent. But there is, a, so we need to go to, it looks like a pencil with a line under it, it's border. We'll click there and we'll click transparent. So let's try that again, shall we? We've got our first slide linked to our second, which is good. Now we're going to move to the second slide and we need to line, we need to link these buttons to the correct answers. So what is the world's most hated font? And we've got, how are we going to create that first link over um, Comic Sans? Click on Comic Sans, right? You could do it that way. Like this is a button and you could do it this way, but whenever student uh, teachers do it that way, they always find inserting the link inside the text and stretching out the text and it looks ugly. So I don't recommend you, that you do oh. it that way. About so, we uh, insert a shape. Bingo. So oh, I'm gonna sorry. go up to insert and then I'm gonna go to shape and mm -hmm. I'm gonna select my shape. I'll just do a rectangle. 
close enough. I mean, it just has to be kind of close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna cover the shape. Mm -hmm. So now I've got my, my rec, uh, yeah, my rectangle in front of my button. What do I need to do now? Insert link I, again. You need, exactly, exactly. Because this has to take, it is true that Comic Sans is the world's most hated font. So it's the correct answer. So we're going to need to link it to which slide? Number four. Number four is correct. Number four, because it says yes. So the way to do that is to click insert link mm -hmm. and then slides in this presentation. Slide four. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And now I click apply. And you can see that the link is inserted when this comes up. You see how it says slide four. Yes. Yeah. Now you know that your link is complete, but now it's blocking. It's blocking Comic Sans. So how do I make it disappear? Go to the paint bucket. Exactly. And then do what? Transparent. Transparent. Good. And then how do I make the border disappear? The pencil with the line. Perfect. Transparent. Bingo. Wow. Cool. <laughs> okay. You want? Let's do. I'll do another one, and then. Um, and then I'm going to do there's uh, for slides three and four, there's kind of an overlay that we're going to do. They, they don't have a button, so we'll do an overlay and I'll show you how to do that. Let's do one more link insert so that you all have that. And if you're working on the if you're working on the bulletin board, it's the same idea. So, for example, idea one, I would go to insert. Shape. I would choose this rectangle and then I would just simply cover idea one. Now I'm going to go to insert link. Okay, and slides in this presentation and idea one will link up to slide two. Got it. Apply. So I would do the same with idea two and link it to slide three. Idea three linked to slide four, idea four linked to slide five, idea five linked to slide six in the exact same way. To make it disappear, I'm gonna click on the paint box, transparent, <laughs> border, transparent. So it works the same way between the two shows. But now let's go ahead and do an overlay. So we know that Comic Sans is the correct answer and we know that we linked it to slide four, yes, correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click on slide four and this time, and by the way, you can remove this image. I know this guy looks crazy, but sometimes it's fun to have a little psychological punch. Um, so at any rate, uh, to, to create this overlay, I'm going to go to insert and it's the same idea, shape. I'll select the rectangle and I'll just draw this over the entire slide. Now, because the student got it right, I wanna direct the student to the next question, which is on slide five. So to link it, I'm going to go to insert, link, slides in this presentation, slide five, apply. And I, I know it's kind of low, but you can, oops, let me go back. There we are. Okay, I know it's kind of low, but you saw that the link had been properly inserted and now we need to make this whole shape disappear. So to do that, I'm gonna go up to fill color, transparent, border, transparent. What do you think, kind of easy? I can remember it all. <laughs> well, um, you know, I didn't do this yet, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a screencast walking you through this and I will link it to the Padlet. I'll link it to the Padlet in this first column. So if you sit there and go, oh, what did she do again? What was that step? Uh -huh. You'll be able to see a video how to. Good. Oh, okay. that's great. Thank you. Yes. yes, you're so welcome. Would you like me to do a few more? Um, it's the border, it's the transparent, the overlay piece that I keep forgetting the steps. Okay, let's go to, um, are you working, Jane, are you on the bulletin board or the facts? No, I'm on the one you're on facts. You're on the one I'm on. Okay, let's go to yeah. Nope. 
And let's go ahead and link NOPE back to slide two because the student did not get it correct. And one of the participants today asked, well, could, could you link it back to the information? Um, and you could do that. Like, let's say you had a piece of information slide here that explained the concept. You could actually link it back to that explanation slide. So for example, if you had been working in the Buddha Bowl slide and she got it wrong, you could take her back to the explanation slide and then she'd have to go forward again and redo the question. But for my purposes, I'm just gonna keep it simple here. I'm going to go ahead and link slide three back to slide two because the student did not get the answer correct. So I want the student to try again. Okay. In order to do that, in order to link slide three back to slide two, what's my first step? Uh, insert link. Insert. Shape. Shape. I need something to so, attach the link to, and that's why I pull up this shape. Okay. I have a, I have a question. So mm -hmm. with, with each quiz question, do you need that yes and no choice after each question? Because the link has to go just to one place. You can't have multiple links. On that. That's absolutely correct. Good point, Jane. See, and that is why there is a yes, no slide after oh, every single question. Got it. Because this nope slide has to link back to slide eight, whereas this yes slide has to link to slide 11. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, Clara, did everyone. that answer your question? Clara so, had a question yes, in the uh, chat. You. Okay. Yes, the same one. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay. So, so we're, we're good? Yep. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, now I've got my shape overlay and I wanna link this shape overlay back to slide two. How do I do that? Um, you go to the fill color. Not yet, I don't wanna make it invisible until after I've linked it. Insert link. Yep, insert link. And I want it to go slides in this presentation and I want it to go back to slide two. And don't okay. forget to hit apply. If you get to hit apply, the link doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, and then you see this little uh, slide three, you can see that it's properly linked. So now I wanna make it invisible. How do I do that? That's where you go to the fill color. Fill, transparent, border, transparent. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I wanna give you a little bit of time to work, but before I do that, I want you to notice something because this is important. If you go to share the slideshow with your students, which you will once you complete it, right? The whole point is to share it with your students. Well, watch what happens when you go to get the share link for your slideshow. When you go to get the share link for your slideshow, uh, you're gonna you're gonna want it to say uh, not not restricted. You will want it to say uh, anyone change. They can view. You want to see anyone on the internet with this link can view. You want to make sure that it says that, and then you want to copy the link. But here's the tricky bit. Watch what happens when I do that. It opens the slideshow in work mode, not in present mode. Can you see that? Yeah. All right, there's a wraparound, and I'm going to show you that wraparound, okay? The wraparound is you can open up a Word or a Google document, either one. Okay, open up a Word or Google document and paste your link on that Word or Google document. Do you all see my Word document right now? Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you see in this link, it has edit? You see that where it says edit? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna change that word to present. Oh. Oh, and, that's and, tricky. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And <laughs> when I do that, now I'm going to copy the link and watch what happens. Bingo. Wow, so I know what you're thinking. Cool. You're like, oh my God, I'm never going to remember that. So, you know, no tears to be shed because there is a how to video on the Padlet, how to change your. It's uh, how to share your Google slideshow in present mode. So if you have it in present mode and you you go to get a link, will that will that um, avoid that extra step of changing the link? I, 
I mean, can I don't you... think it worked for me. I can't remember why. And it might be, uh, I don't think that worked for me. I can't remember my, why, but let me just try it right now. And let's see if that does work. It might. For some reason, I always wound up doing it this way. And I don't know if it's, yeah, it did, it did do it like that. So you could try that. Okay. But here's another good thing to know about that little trick though, is that you could, if you wanted to, if you wanted to create a template for your students to use Google Slides with, you can change that little word present once again to copy. And now what the students will get when they have this link, they will actually copy your template to their hard drive, just like you did with this presentation, with this template. Uh -huh. So if you wanted to, let's say you had, um, you want your students to complete eight slides and you have a gorgeous theme, you want them to work with that theme, you could share it out this way. And that little copy cheat is also on the Padlet. So at this time, I will link the Padlet in the chat box so that you all have access to it. Okay. And the Padlet, you don't have to do anything to it. You just click on the links and things open up for you, informative things. Everything that I've shared with you today. So um, how's everybody doing? Are there any questions regarding the linking? We're, we're good? Awesome. Yes, I have a question. I'm sorry, Stephanie. Sure. Um, I was able to get to linking the slide two for um, the bulletin board. But uh, when I press, because I wrote click here so that it can go to slide two, but I can't do the second part, which is the little pencil. Uh, I'm missing that part. Would you like to what? share your screen, Ray? Transparent. And okay, yeah, I'll share my screen very quickly just so you can see what I, I did. Um, Padlet is free, yes it is. Well, actually, no, that's not, that's not true. You can create a limited number of Padlets for free. Our agency actually has, um, our agency actually paid for it because we use it so often. So our, um, the San Diego Community College District actually paid for a version. But there is a free version, but I think you can only create like one Padlet at a time. So you'd have to keep deleting. Okay, Stephanie, can you see the screen? Yep, I can. So right here is where I put, for step one, you click here for the ingredients and I linked it to slide two. Okay. But when I click, it it just it just shows it, Ah, It's there, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because you're not in present mode. If you click on the present in the upper right-hand corner. Um, sorry. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So now if you click on that link, once you click on the present mode, Oh, perfect. Great. Now, yeah, yeah. Then it, it actually takes you to that slide. Okay. That That's it. That was it. So I guess I, I was doing it okay. You were. So basically, number the slide, the first slideshow would be all the steps, and then I'd link each one to where I would want them to go to, correct? That's correct. And then the second component is they need to get back to this sort of this baseboard, right? They need to get back to this uh, I, I guess you would call it the mother slide. Right. They need to get back there. So you would need to create overlays for slides two, three, four, five, right. and six right. that would link on back to slide one. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll stop sharing. Stephanie, we have a question. Uh -huh. How long will the uh, information on Padlet be available? Oh, I'm not planning on deleting it anytime soon. So it'll be there. Is my yeah, because we our district does have an account, so we we can have multiple padlets forever if we want. So I'm not planning on deleting it anytime soon. Moreover, the videos can all be found on YouTube as well, and um, my YouTube channel is CE Mesa Two Teacher. Uh, you'd have to you'd have to scan through like Google ads of videos, so I don't know if you'd want to do it that way, but.
Okay, uh, the, the last little piece of information that I'd like to share is I am going to share a link to the evaluation in the chat box. And we'd appreciate it if you go ahead and complete that. Um, oops. You got it? Uh, almost. Okay, I have it. Oh, do you, Cheryl, you want to go yes. ahead and just paste it right in? Yes. Again, not all of our sessions will be um, posted. So they're basically going off of great evaluations. And those are the ones that are going to be, uh, the recordings are going to be um, changed and posted onto OTAN because we can't mediate all of the recordings. So give her uh, five stars, thumbs up, and we would love it. Stephanie's been awesome. Cheryl, that was a great pitch. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie, can you do me, can you just go back, circle back to the last part of what you said to Ray, to Ray about overlaying that last part? I had the same problem as him. Okay, sure. And sure. So you, that helped. His question was the exact thing I was about to ask, but then I kind of missed the purpose of what you were saying that last part about the. Okay, okay. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen and I'll take you back. Are you doing the bulletin board? Yes. Close out some of these windows here. There. Okay. So we're back at the bulletin board. Can you see that? Yes. Great. Okay. So uh, what I was mentioning to Ray is that your slides numbers two, three, four, five, and six will all need to link back to slide one. Slide one is sort of your motherboard of information. That's your landing page. So for example, if you'll remember, my syllabus always linked back to the overall syllabus and then they'd click on the link to the modules, the module would always link back to that first slide. So is, the, is your question, how do I do that? Yeah, could you just do that one more time quickly? Uh -huh, absolutely. Just another link, it's a, but you're overlaying the whole slide is what you're saying. Absolutely, I'll do it, I'll do it right now. Thank so you. what you would do is you would go insert, shape, and choose the rectangle because it's the same shape as your slide. You would cover the entire face of your slide. And then I always link it while I can still see it before I make it visible because it's, I feel like it's just easier that way. So then I'm gonna insert my link, slides in this presentation, first slide, apply. Now that I have my link, I'm going to make this rectangle disappear by clicking fill, border transparent, and now if I go to present mode, this slide links right back to the first slide. Okay, but that would prohibit you from adding any other links within that slide? That's correct. So if you wanted to do that, you could. You could have all of these things linking to different slides. It would take coordinated effort, but you could have all of them linking to different things. So you could have hello, introduce yourself, linking to another slide where there's a happy video of you introducing yourself then that video slide would need to link back to slide two because you want the person to explore this other link here and then perhaps this link would take them back to the mother slide which is one okay thank you mm -hmm. so, um, so St stephanie real quick the reason why you you have six slides is because you have six six sections on your motherboard right yeah yeah oh, okay so yeah if i want eight slides i'll do eight sections if i want five i'll do five exactly like that like the the person who asked the prior question she would need to add additional slides let's say she said uh she wanted to introduce yourself hello she could create a slide she could insert a slide here that this would link to here and have a video on that introducing herself and then she could link that slide back to slide two and have another slide linked here you can have as many as you want but um, I don't know, in my experience, kind of keep it simple, stupid is kind of the way to go. You'll have this network that is just, ah. so just consider that. Yeah. How, do you link a, how do you link a video or do a video on- Oh, you can just insert a video onto the slide. Um, I'll, I'll share my screen real quick. It's 412, I'll try to get that done. So what you would do is, um, let's say I wanted to insert a video into the slide, I can, add a blank slide. And then I would go to insert 
if I had a video made, like I would have my own YouTube channel probably, but let's say I want a video of the Taj Mahal. I could search through YouTube. I'll select this one. And there's my video. Oh, well, that's simple. Uh-huh. I'd like to ask a quick question too. Um, let's say you're reviewing a grammar point or vocabulary or something like that, and you want to throw in a fun vid slideshow to do it, to make it interactive. Since you're really uh, nimble at this, how long does it take you to prep that kind of slideshow? Because I'm worried about prep time for all. Oh, I know. You know, that's why I say keep it simple in the beginning. You know, five questions maybe. Um, I just use these templates and I can go bam, 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 bam. You know, so I can get it done pretty quickly, but I couldn't at first. So yeah. I really had to limit it. I really did. Okay. So it, yeah, takes, so it's, takes, it, it takes a little like bit of practice. 10, yeah. 15 minutes to do like five questions or something like yeah, that. Yeah. And then you got to go back and check it. You know, obviously you have to go to present mode and make sure everything's linked properly. But um, yeah, I would keep them really simple to begin with. And then as you get the hang of it, you will be able to create those really webby type, you know, yeah. slideshows if you want to. So if you, if you make a copy of one that you've already created, and then you just want to change the questions. You can do that in the copy and then rename it. And it's a new slideshow, right? That's correct. That's correct. You can just use that copy technique or you can copy it in your drive. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I mean, because mm -hmm. I use Google Drive a lot. But I'm just wondering if we could use the same like template uh, slideshow, make a copy, and it has the links already there. you just changing the content. Oh, oh, yeah, I think you can. I think you can. I'm not positive. All right. But I'm, I think you can. OK. So, um, I put my email in the chat in case somebody forgot to grab the Padlet. Send me an email, and I'll send it out to you. But I think at, it's 4.15. And if I'm correct, Cheryl, we really do have to keep to the time frame, right? Yes, dear. Yes. How do we get your materials, though? What's that? How do we get the, the Padlet materials? Uh, there's a link in the chat box. And if you click on that, you can go ahead and bookmark it on your web browser so that you can go oh, back and see it okay. again and again. I, I didn't realize that's what I was doing. I did get to do that. Okay. okay, yeah. So the Padlet link is there. You might want to click on it before exiting. Otherwise, send me an email and I'll, I'll send you the link. Thank you so much. It was amazing. Thank you. More than I expected. Great. So much more. Thank you, Thank everybody. You so On behalf much. of OTAN, we appreciate your participation. And Stephanie, you're an awesome presenter. Thank you so much.